Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here bringing you guys another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a transition with a logo in After Effects. So you guys would have seen mine at the beginning of this video. Um, I just created another one real quick, which is actually a little better than the one I use. Um, you can see it comes out, there's actually three stripes, I guess, with like a little gap in here. And then logo unve uh, comes up, unveils itself, I guess, and then goes away. And you can just use this in between clips as a transition, uh, rather than like a fade to black or a standard transition. And so this is like a little more customizable, it uses your logo. Um, or you could use a logo of the series you're doing or whatever, you guys get the point. But um, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is, in After Effects, create a new project. Um, uh, I'm going to save this real quick, actually. <laughs> actually, at 100 likes, I'll put that down for uh, download in the description if you guys want, so you guys can just edit it yourselves. But the first thing we're going to do in this new project is do composition, new composition, and the settings I'm going to be using is 1920 by 1080. You just want to use whatever uh, you use for your videos, which this is usually the standard now, unless you're still rocking 720. Um, and then 10 seconds duration. It's but it's going to be shorter in the end, but that's I just do that as a standard. I do 30 frames, uh, black background. Background doesn't really matter. Um, and then you can name the comp whatever. I'll just call this uh, transition. Okay. First thing we want to do is go to layer, new, solid. And you want to pick your main color. So like the big box when the logo unveil, like unveils itself, the color behind it. So I did white in that little preview before. I believe for the one I use, it's that blue. I can't quite remember it, um, but I'm going to be using white. I'm just going to remake what I just showed you guys. Um, so I'm going to do white, click OK. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my logo. Here we are. Let me drag it in there. So it should center itself automatically. And then we're just going to hold shift and drag down the size to like right there. That works. That's where I want it. Now let's select the white solid and we're going to zoom out a little bit here and go to the rotation tool up here. And we're going to rotate this, hold shift and it'll go at it exactly a 45 degree angle and then get the selection tool again. And we're just going to make this really wide. And then you want to change the size depending on how long you want it really. So I'm just going to go for like right, like, maybe like that size. So it's sort of a square. Now this might change, you can change it later on as well, but that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna drag this down to the left corner. Now you can do it in any corner you want, you want or side or whatever, you can put it anywhere. This is where it's gonna start out on. And we wanna select that layer and press P. So position comes up, click the stopwatch. And actually I wanna move this a little further. So there's more room here to add those stripes. So let me go a little further and I'm trying to line this point with the corner and the uh, opposite corner. So like this sort of diagonal, like as close as I can. And then I'm going to move it forward a little bit to maybe right there and drag it to the right corner like that. Now, if we play that real quick, you get something like that which works, but we want to add a little something. So we're going to select these two keyframes, press F9 on the keyboard, that'll make it an easy ease. And then we want to go to this button right here, the graph editor, press that. And we want to select the one of the points, bring it in to about 50% influence, and then do the exact same on the other point. like that. So you get a symmetrical graph like that. Then you can click out of it, press it, and you can see that's a little bit smoother um, of a transition. Now we're going to duplicate this white layer, just Command C, Command V, drag it on top of the logo. And then on the logo layer, you want to make sure you have trick mat here. If this is not up, you want to go to toggle switches and modes, 
until this appears and it should say none on the logo you want to go to alpha Met, white solid you can see it'll disappear but if i go back once that layer is up it'll appear so it's sort of masked to that layer so if i play it real quick you get something like that now let's go to the original white solid and let's duplicate it and drag you can use either one of them to the bottom i guess i could have just left it as it was but we're going to go ahead to effects and presets and you want to type in fill and you want to get fill and drag it on that bottom layer and then you want to select a color i'm going to be using the colors from my logo so i'm going to get the eyedropper and Actually, I need to zoom in a little bit so I can select it. And I'm going to get this pink, which is on the stroke. Zoom out again. And let's go to the beginning. I'm going to press... Actually, I don't need to press P on the keyboard, I guess. But what I'm going to do is go to this point right here on the side and just expand it a little bit. And now the difference here is going to be the... Uh, the pink spot so you can uh, change the width of it by increasing and it should do the same exact thing on the other side because our uh, anchor points right in the middle so now if I play this through real quick you can see the stripe but the logo will only appear still on the white part so the pink and the other colors we add the logo won't be visible there so it kind of looks like it's underneath it I guess um, so that's the effect we're sort of sort of going for um, Sorry, that's not very centered, but you can see that's sort of what we have right now. And I'm actually going to re... Whoops. I'm actually going to right-click, rename, and just do pink. And then we're going to duplicate this layer again. And I'm going to bring pink to below. And we're going to change the color again, but this time to the blue. And you can use any colors you want, really. I'm just using the colors of my logo, obviously. And boom, there we go. Let's zoom out again, and let's change the size. And I don't like these to be the same size, so I'll do this one a little thinner, like that. Then if we play it, boom, you can kind of see what's going on here. And one thing I did uh, was that I realized that the s stripes weren't big enough for me. I didn't really like it, uh, but I didn't want to expand them wider, if you know what I mean. So what I did was in the white part, I selected the white solid, well, both white solids, really, uh, the main one and the masking one. And I just changed their size a little to make the pink stripe a little thicker, like that. And that's sort of what we get right here. Now I'm actually just gonna preview it. That's like real time. You can see it's real quick. We don't want it to be too long because it's just a quick transition. You just show them your logo and then boom, it's gone. And that's what we want. Now the other thing I did was add like a little stripe at the end with like a tra uh, transparent space in between. And to do that, we're just gonna be doing the same thing uh, we've been doing, except we're gonna have to play with the positioning a little more. So actually, let me rename this layer quick so we're a little bit more organized. So this is blue. And we're gonna duplicate the blue one because I want the stripe to be blue. And we're gonna go press P on the keyboard and go to that first, um, first spot I forget that oh. uh, to the first keyframe and we're gonna make this a lot thinner and then we're gonna change the position out in front and we want to make sure this is still pretty much in line you can see it looks fairly in line that's pretty good and you want to keep in mind of the spacing so it's something like that and then if we play this through you'll notice at the very end it goes back to the middle, which again, we don't want. So we want to line up uh, with the last anchor point or keyframe and then just drag this to the end and line it up identically to what we did before. Like that. That should be pretty good. Now let me zoom in here and see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It looked pretty even throughout. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. You can see the transparent bit there, and that will look really sweet on a video. Um, I might actually change my uh, transition to this. This looks pretty good. Um, and then we want to do the same exact thing with that to the other side. So let's duplicate this blue again. 
and let's press P on the keyboard, zoom out again so we can see a little more. And we're gonna drag it. We're gonna make sure we're at the first key uh, keyframe again, and then we're just gonna drag it to the other side. Like that, there we go. And then again, let's go to the second keyframe and drag it to the other side. Like that, there we go. This should be good now. Let's play through real quick. Boom, that's exactly what we want. Looks cool. Uh, it might be a little too quick. Maybe we want the logo to show and you just have to extend the second keyframe on all these to slow it down a little bit. Uh, but when we're done, we just want to go here and drag the work area into where we want it to end. So somewhere around here, we're going to end this. Maybe like right there. And we want to go to composition, add to render queue. And we, this is important, we want to go to the output model and we want to go to channels RGB plus alpha that will render it so there's a transparent background and also uh, you want to make sure the uh, whatever this is called the transparency toggle is switched and highlighted blue so you get the checkerboard background which signal signifies transparency and then once you're done with that you just have to title it whatever you want um, sure and then also you can pick the format I always just stick with QuickTime though and then you just press render and that will render it out for you guys and that's everything guys hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please leave a like at 100 likes i'll put that file i showed you earlier in the description uh let me know if you guys want to see any other after effects tutorials and yeah guys follow me on twitter for updates and stuff that i'm doing be sure to subscribe for the channel for more tutorials add my snapchat to see things i'm working on and like exclusive stuff uh twitter and snapchat's quezzy just add them and yeah Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.